Welcome to part two of Citizens Forum. Our guest in this segment is Darren Alexander. Uh, I've known Darren for years and he's always got interesting stuff to say. Um, so here we go. And you wanted to start off with the question, are we in a new dark age? <laughs> well, where do you go from there? Where do we go from there? I, I think it's worth considering um, and uh, and I'm not speaking just off the top of my hat. There's a, an influential author, his name is Morris Berman. He's, uh, he's written a, a trilogy on, on the subject. And he would contend, and, uh, and I can't help but agree, that uh, all the signs would indicate that we are, we have already, in fact, entered into a new dark age. There's now, what, does it, what do you mean by a dark age? Because I hadn't really thought about it until you started mm. to... Uh, well, where, where idealism trumps um, humanity, I think, is one... Where idealism? Idealism trumps, trumps humanity. Yeah. So to open that up a little bit, um, you, you could say that we're reacting, that there's this sense, almost like what we saw in times of rising fascism earlier in the, in the 1900s, um, where, where, where societies take on a reactionary role to what's happening around them. They're not so much, they don't have the agency to, uh, to, to, to direct their own futures, so they're very prone to kind of riding on the coattails of, of, um, of different ideologies that can, that can come up. So you mean instead of us saying we want to go in this direction and, and start doing great things, what's happening instead is things are happening around us and we have to keep reacting to these. Right. Right, and and, and, that, and they're not positive. Yes, and they're not positive, and and it, and it would it would seem that um, we we are losing our ability to have rational arguments. So um, again, it tends to be reactionary or emotional responses to what's going on around us. Um, our literacy skills seem to be on the downward trend rather than upward and and by that I mean the the, the literacy skills required to see out um, an argument logically for instance um, also our basic literacy skills would would uh, as an educator I, I see that all the time in college university um, the level of, of literacy that the students are entering with the writing reading ability to follow an argument logically from a, uh, through uh, in a paper. Um, really, it's, uh, it's in, it's, it, it would appear that they, these are all in the, in the decline. Not only that, but our institutions are upholding these declining kind of um, uh, paths by, by their very nature. So for instance, Gaining tuition from students trumps what are the admission requirements of students now because we have that kind of corporate institutional way of our schooling happening now. Um, and all this, th these are just some of the signs, but I, but I would suggest that August 21st of this year just passed, so we're talking just a few days ago, marks uh, uh, one very clear, clear indication that we are truly in a dark age. On August 21st, Bradley Manning was sentenced to 35 years in prison for his role um, sharing information to WikiLeaks. And that means that somebody who is speaking out, even as Bradley Manning what he brought forward in the in the in this case, he anybody can read this online. Um, he he was doing it for his country. He he said so much. He was doing it in, in with all the best intentions. What he saw 
um, was leaving him thinking that, that it can't be, this is not okay. That it's one thing to be in a war, but it's, one, it's another thing to be in an unjust war. And then it's another thing again to be in an unjust war, but propagandizing it and, and misleading the public to, 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 to believe something else is happening other than what really is, whether it's withholding information or covering up information or not releasing information. Or, uh, or what have you. So uh, Bradley Manning, uh, for, um, for his effort, has now been assigned to 35 years in prison. And this with the Barack Obama administration, you know, at the, at the, at the um, <laughs> running the show. So, so that, that seems to me to be one of those kind of ultimate indicators that uh, that uh, truth is is not acceptable in this so-called democracy the, of the the greatest superpower on the planet. If yeah. that's what and that's they, one they really maybe indication that we're entering a dark age. But of course, there's there's many many others as well. You know, yeah. environmental collapse social, a lot of big social problems, entire nations uh, collapsing economically, yes. you know, in southern Europe, Africa, yes. South America. Yes. Growing uh, disparity between rich and poor. Yeah. And uh, wars that aren't even based on what was traditionally a front or a cause for war, whether it was territory or what have you, but now an imperialistic global imperialistic war effort. What the, when you say imperialistic, which a lot of people say the United States is now, what, what does that word mean, imperial, imperialism? I take it to mean a kind of um, a, a, uh, a power by, by um, almost by by rote or by tradition, so so that that, that there's no no just cause for that that the arrangement of the, of that power structure. There's no um, there's no discussion about it. It's it's a it's a top down dictate, and that's how I see imperialism. Um, to you know, I guess if I was to 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 pare it down to the common denominator, I think that's how I would, okay, I would so it's read sort of it. the king of the world, like a king of the world. Yeah, uh, you wanted to talk a bit about why we don't need more news. <laughs> I I should mention I I come from the point of view as an educator. Um, my background's in education and also in communications. And so I'm a producer of media, producer of communications, and I write curriculum and I teach. And, and we, we know that news is, news sort of, in the end it's a, it's a compilation of education and information and communication. That's the idea of news. I think if we think about it, basically we think of news as informing us and educating us. And um, a few things have changed recently with regard to news. We, we now have this phenomenal digital archive of news that is um, s remarkably searchable um, by, by term, by date, by any kind of a piece of information you want. So, so for those who are seeking information, whether it's to back up there their process of, you know, deducing an argument or whether it's f for information or whether it's for education or what have you, um, it's, it's there to be found. And, and it's there in heaps and heaps and heaps and heaps, right? We, we know there's, there's, no, there's, no, there's, no, uh, there's no shortage. But, um, but this idea of news being something that's going to change our minds or that's going to inform us and take us in a different direction, I think those days have passed. 
I think w in, in this way we truly are in a, in a postmodern way now in that we're not looking for that candidate with the sweat on his brow, you know, then we're going to decide that this is not the candidate for us anymore because he doesn't hold up well on television. We're not looking for that, you know, um, the oil, another oil spill account that's going to change our mind and, deci and make us decide that we're going to give up the car or we're going to, you know, make an effort, every effort we can to, 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 to remove our dependency on, on this, um, on, on crude. Climate change is a perfect example too. We, we, you know, for those who, 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 who are the deniers, um, uh, you, you know, more news about the effects of climate change will not change their opinion about anything. And for that matter, those of us who, who have come to believe that something is afoot and that climate change is real and that we are living through a, a, a horrible era in, 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 our, in our environmental uh, um, d um, relations, I think we are also, we don't need another story about how many square thousands of kilometers of the Antarctic, uh, you know, uh, ice has been lost. And what we need to do is do something. What we need to do is do something. We need to, we need to shift into action and, and uh, with what we have already, again, if, it's, uh, if we need a little more information to back up our position or, or, or to share it uh, uh, with each other, th it's already there stockpiles of it, more than we could possibly ever need to make our case in any which way. So you're, you're saying what we need is critical literacy, whatever that means. Critical literacy, critical literacy. It's, um, this was, uh, it, it's close to my heart. It was the, the foundation of my, my graduate work in, 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 um, in education and communications. Um, but uh, I, I feel it's come a lot f uh, farther than that for me and, and just, uh, just generally. Critical literacy to define it. It's, uh, if you think of gener our, our literacies, uh, the, um, the math and reading, writing, the three R's it was called, the reading, writing, arithmetic. <laughs> um, we, we've, we've since, uh, you could say that, that uh, a media literacy, being able to decode, you know, if somebody's trying to sell us something on television is... Telling us the truth. Is, yeah, the, where, where is the truth in, in this media? And now we have the internet, we have all this multimedia. So the uh, media has become more complicated than it was, you know, 50 yeah. years ago, I think. And, and, uh, and as a result, we've really been taken for a ride because the ones who are wielding the media are really pros with it. And anybody here in the studio knows what's involved in editing and putting together a production and, and being on the other side is very helpful to, 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 to gauge and to ha gain better appreciation for what goes into, a, say, a television show and, and what does it look like, um, you know, in, in real terms as opposed to what you see sitting in front of the television set or in front of your monitor and the computer. Um, but all of these things are fine. These are gaining some insight into, in, 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 into the media. But a critical media literacy is coming at it in terms of now what I'm just starting to get at. That, that there are those people making the media, taking great pains to do it just right or just so. And you begin to question why. And you begin to question um, further um, whose interest is it in, and are there um, interest packs? I tend to, I, I tend to uh, 
because there's so much disparaging notion around conspiracy, I tend to call refer to conspiracy as an interest pack now, a, a group of people or a, or a, or a subset of, of interests who get together for a particular purpose, whether it's to earn a buck or, or to take over a new uh, quotient or, or, or portion of an industry or, or what have you. There's, there's movement afoot all the time. And, uh, and those are all um, special interests who are looking to, to gain um, to, to, to gain by, by, by their movements, by, by, their, by, their, by their work. And, and so I, it, it, part of that critical literacy is understanding what's, what's happening. And, and in order to, to go there, there's some thought, some, some reading certainly, some historical evidence that needs some attention. And, uh, and these things are, are, um, are, are part of a, cri a, a critical literacy. Well, in Canada, I would say, certainly myself, I never got any training or teaching uh, along the way in anything like that. You know, you mentioned earlier being able to make an argument from A to Z. Yeah. We don't receive any training in that either. No. And, and our media is kind of, you hear two people yelling at each other. That's yeah. the style of, uh, of discussion. Yeah, of certain kinds of discussion. Here it's different, so there are options and, and alternatives. But it, it's true, you know, the logical argument was a, 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 a facet of, of a basic education at one time. It was uh, a, a tenant of the basic education, but it has been eroded and, and neglected, and it's gone. There's critical media, or media literacy shows up in some school curriculums in some provinces in the, in the country, but again, it's a bit of a watered down, almost antidote to what critical media literacy would be, which is gaining a real understanding of, uh, of, of what is possible and uh, not just uh, swallowing dictates through what is largely a, a, a monopoly of media that we, that we enjoy. And Darren, I'm afraid we're going to have to let it go at that. Thank you very much for doing this. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. And Thanks for having me. I think uh, media literacy is extremely important and we'll talk about it again. Thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum. Mm -hmm.